Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode two of Careers in Aviation brought to you by Adorn Before Flight. I'm your host, Bernard Green. Careers in Aviation is a video series dedicated to introducing today's youth to tomorrow's employment opportunities in aviation. In the first part of our series, we want to introduce you to aviation professionals of various types. And if you stay tuned, we want to give you the opportunity to ask questions and follow up. So where am I today and why? Well, this is the cabin of the Bombardier Global 7500. It's one of the most impressive business jets in its class. Now, there are many pilots out there, including myself, who would love to see how this aircraft handles. However, I want to ask you today, have you ever wondered what it takes for an airport to handle an aircraft like this or others like it? Where could you go to work professionally to help ensure that aircraft and aviators can you take off and land safely and everything else in between? Well, today we're traveling to Orlando Executive Airport in Orlando, Florida, where we'll speak with someone who does just that and they're in charge too. So pick a seat, fasten your seatbelt and enjoy the conversation. And also to remember, if you find yourself interested in what our guest does today, Take great notes, listen carefully, and remember to follow up. Good afternoon, Cyrus Callum. How are you doing today? Doing fantastic, Bernard. It's good to see you again. You too, you too. Same here. Um, I want to welcome you to uh, the episode two of Careers in Aviation, brought to you by, of course, Adorn Before Flight. And um, we're really excited to be able to interview you. Um, we've had a lot of uh, uh, of, of interactions in the past, and it's nice to be able to circle back uh, after all the years and be able to, to speak with you on your on your role, your current role, and uh, how you got there, and, and and allow you to share that with our viewers. That's fantastic, and I really appreciate you choosing me. I'm humbled and honored, and whatever I can do to help our youth and the next generation find joy and love in the aviation industry especially in particular airports, I'm more than happy to be a part of it. So always good to catch up with you. Like you said, we've uh, been uh, good friends for several years and, and, and colleagues in a variety of different functions as it relates to the industry. So i uh, happy, definitely happy to do this for you. Yeah, thanks, thanks. So I wanna make one quick note before I start with our first question here. And that is that we are standing in the cabin of a very beautiful business jet uh, made by Bombardier. And uh, I believe this is the 7500 series. And uh, so we thought it'd be fitting because we understand you have a lot of traffic of this type of aircraft that we're standing in at your facility. Absolutely. So the uh, global, you know, Bombardier Global 7500, is one of my favorite aircraft. As a matter of fact, we have a variety of base tenants here that operate the Global 6000 type and love to see that bird fly out on a regular basis. So happy to uh, see the 7500 there on Omato. Yeah, thanks. So if you don't mind then, what is it that, that you do? Uh, what, what is your job title and what, what, what do you do? All right, so currently I'm the Director of General Aviation for the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority and the Airport Director at Orlando Executive Airport. I'm also the Chair of the Board of Examiners for the American Association of Airport Executives. And so what that means is we oversee the accreditation and certification process for airport executives, those that are running airports and you'll see a lot of airport executives or airport directors have the 
AAE after their name. That stands for the Accredited Airport Executive. And we actually oversee that process. It's pretty strenuous, but those that have been able to achieve it uh, find it very rewarding as they elevate through their career. Okay, that sounds very interesting. So with your role as the aviation director, does that mean that you are in charge of, looks like on your shirt there, Orlando Executive Airport? That's exactly it. So I'm in charge of Orlando Executive Airport and also for the Aviation Authority, uh, we operate the Reliever Airport. So we encourage all the general aviation operators to operate here at Executive Airport rather than at Orlando International Airport or MCO as it's effectively known. Okay, so one question that I know, or maybe it's not necessarily a question per se, but one comment that a lot of people who are not as familiar with aviation will often say is, I see a lot of uh, private airplanes going into a lot of private airports. So right. is your airport a private airport or is it a public airport or who all gets to use your airport? So our airport, Orlando Executive Airport is open to the public. A lot of people refer to private aircraft as probably the single engine prop driven aircraft that may have a private owner, but this particular airport, we actually serve the public. So if you make arrangements to fly into our facility, uh, we can't turn you away. As long as you are able to uh, uh, fly an aircraft that is able to operate on, on the runways and taxiways here, we'll, we'll be happy to accept you. Okay, that's great to hear, especially yep. since we've got this beautiful uh, Bombardier here behind me. Absolutely. Uh, we can get I, it. <laughs> I would love to get that aircraft in and hopefully fuel it up. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So that brings up to another topic. I understand that one way that you guys make money is from fuel. Um, Absolutely. Is, so with that, can you speak more to that and what other ways that you guys are maintaining your self-sufficiency? Okay, so typically um, our airport, we collect a, a, a fuel uh, surcharge. It's about 12 cent per gallon uh, that is pumped into your aircraft. We are fortunate to have two fixed base operators here that actually will pump that fuel for us, uh, Atlantic Aviation and Shelter Aviation. And so with that, on a monthly basis, they will send us that portion of the 12 cent uh, per the gallons of fuel that they pumped over the month. But other ways that we make money here is on land leases. So with those two FBOs that I mentioned, they pay us on a regular basis for the land that they lease for the hangars and the other facilities that they use to help service the tenants, other tenants and users on the airport. This airport's very unique in the aspect that we also have a variety of different commercial retail properties. So there's three shopping centers, as well as a gas station, a grocery store, a furniture store, uh, a self storage facility. So there's a variety of different opportunities to make money here. And actually the commercial development that we have is responsible for 60% of our revenues. So that helps keep costs low for the users that fly into this airport. I see, I see. So would you mind uh, going back also to, uh, you mentioned that term FBO. Uh, right. Would you mind explaining just a little bit kind of high level what a FBO is? Sure, so the fixed base operator is in a sense an entity that helps service the aircraft. If you're flying to a general aviation airport or even a commercial service airport, the fixed base operator actually helps the general aviation population. So uh, you'll fly in, they'll provide you line service. Uh, so they'll have staff that's able to fuel your aircraft. Uh, some FBOs have maintenance. Most air FBOs also have uh, flight briefing or ability for pilots to get their weather briefs and ability to file their flight plans. And a lot of them have a lot of resources and different things for pilots to use. Let's say for instance, if they wanna go into town and grab a quick bite to eat, some uh, more extravagant FBOs actually have sleeping quarters for pilots. Okay. And so there's a variety of different things, meeting space and, 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 and 
a lot of them have like special themed snacks or popcorn machines, cookies. Uh, some of the more extravagant ones even have restaurants. So there's a variety of different things. Kind of if you think about in a commercial service uh, airport where you have a terminal that provides service for your passengers, the FBO in a sense provides service for the general aviation users. I see. So uh, now I know at least I have two options when we come in and land for, uh, for, uh, for getting in and off of our airplane here. And if we uh, need a little bit of maintenance and fuel, we, uh, we, we, we know we have two options, I guess. So Absolutely. Yep. They'll take good care of you. They'll fuel you up. They'll even store your aircraft. Um, they provide hangar space for you for uh, the, the transient uh, user. And so there's a variety of different uh, amenities that they can provide to you to make your journey a lot more comfortable. Okay, great to know. So along those lines then too, I guess, moving forward from that, uh, sounds like you obviously work with the FBOs uh, on a regular basis to make sure they're getting the resources they need. Um, I would have presumed that as you have uh, airport development around the, the airport and what have you, you work with not just the FBOs and, and the other um, tenants that you mentioned, but is the, is, are there other people that you work with? I guess the question in short, who all do you work with at the airport on a day-to-day -day basis and within your oh. staff and others? Oh, wow. I, I work with a variety of different people with a variety of different responsibilities, um, just and just starting on the airport and working the way out. I have a staff of 14 full-time employees that includes an airport manager, a senior administrative assistant. I have operations supervisors and a very experienced maintenance team that takes care of the airfield. I have an electrician and then also um, via contract, I have an, an auto mechanic and also have janitorial services and landscaping services to make sure that the airport is looking as nicest and as freshest. Um, I also work very closely with a customs and border protection um, officer uh, that is actually a part of our office team here. So this airport, Orlando Executive Airport, has international flights as well. So we can process international flights from all over the world uh, if, as long as they make their uh, reservations and, and let us know we can accommodate them. I see. Out, yep, and then going out from there, um, I work with a variety of stakeholders uh, within the city of Orlando, the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority, and also Orange County, which is here in Florida. So um, on a regular basis, I will be in meetings with the mayor of Orlando, the mayor of Orange County, I'll be in meetings with senior executives for the FBOs. Also, I meet with a variety of prospective tenants, those who wanna come and build hangars or those who may want to start some type of business relationship with Orlando Executive Airport. Uh, I have to often meet with them in order to work out a lot of the details with a lot of the uh, contracts that we try to uh, push through the system. Wow, that's a, it sounds like it's a, a lot of different people that you get to meet and see on a regular basis. Absolutely. I, I'm curious though, for our viewers sake, how uh, diverse is, is that group of people? I, it sounds like it is because they come from so many different uh, arenas, you know, it sounds like you right. have public side people for the for the city, all the way to, to, to private side individuals with some of the FBOs, et cetera, et cetera, right. so forth. Uh, is it would you would how would you classify the diversity of the people who you get to interact with on a regular basis? Well, I would say that my team here is is very diverse. The airport manager is a female as well as the senior administration manager here. And then I have a variety of different staff members that represent a variety of different ethnic backgrounds, including uh, other African-Americans, other Latino or Latinx Americans. And um, of course, uh, I, I also have an employee here that's from Morocco and um, he, he actually uh, spoils us because he brings in a lot of Moroccan cuisine. He's mm. quite the cook. 
And okay. so um, whenever he brings the tangine, uh, everybody is, is very excited for <laughs> that potential meal. So um, the diversity in the entire organization, the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority um, is generally diverse as well. Uh, there's a number of minorities and women in leadership roles with the Aviation Authority. However, as always with the aviation industry, it could be better. And in terms of trying to look for uh, creating a more diverse work site, a more diverse work environment, we also need to make sure that we're a lot more inclusive. It's just one thing in saying, yes, I have a minority and they happen to be uh, working in the maintenance staff, but we wanna make sure that they're able to have projects and do different things and be included in a lot of the decision-making because they do a lot of things to make this airport what it is and as successful as it can be. And so we wanna make sure that they're getting the recognition in what they do because they're putting their, their hearts out there and, and definitely providing their resources. So we need to sure. reward them for that. Sure, sure. Yeah, thanks yeah. for sharing that. So on that note, I'd like to ask a two-part question. And that question is sort of, they're tied together in topic. The question is, how did you, what was your path to get to where you are, you know, sort of quote unquote, and almost literally to sitting today as the, uh, as, the as, as the director of the Orlando Executive Airport. And the other part of that is sort of getting into how so one of our, any of our viewers could follow a similar path or maybe an improved path if your path wasn't, you know, the, the most straightforward or, you know, quote unquote, easiest way into the seat you're sitting in today. Well, sure, sure. So I, I grew up in Denver, Colorado, outside Denver Stapleton Airport. And so while others complained about aircraft noise, I was actually <laughs> fascinated by it. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to be involved with the aviation industry since I was a late toddler. As soon as I was able to walk and you know, able to see airplanes flying around. I just knew I wanted to be a part of that. So uh, from there, I started taking flight lessons at the age of 14, because naturally when people think of the aviation industry, you're thinking about being a pilot. And so I, I joined a flight club, Blue Ridge Flight Club uh, at the then Denver Front Range Airport and was fortunate enough to get an internship while I was in high school with United Airlines. United Airlines in Denver, they have their flight training center for their pilots and United had an adopt a school program and my high school happened to be one of those high schools in that program. So with that, I was uh, humbly awarded the opportunity to serve an internship with United, which then gave other internship opportunities to uh, other aviation related companies and and also scholarship opportunities uh, to go to college. So um, I, I fell in love with airports while serving on a youth panel uh, to review the planning aspects of the new Denver International Airport. And so um, when I went to college, I went to Southern Illinois University and after taking an airport management class that further concreted my desire to uh, become more of a patron or, or more of a, uh, or to design more of a career lined up for uh, airport management than flying. So um, I was sold from there, did an internship at the new Denver International Airport and, and everything kind of took off from there. I see. And so you mentioned a key thing there too. And that was, I think that you kind of became you know, sold, as you said, on the airport management side of the house a little bit more than right. the uh, flying aspect. Um, do you have any uh, insight or, or things as to uh, why you chose the, 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 the management route or why you had more of a, of a why, did that, why did that resonate with you a little bit more than the flying side? Not that the, you know, yeah. yeah. Well, the, the flying side, it, it to me, and this is no offense to any of the pilots out there, but yeah, it, was a, it was a little mundane. 
and routine. Whereas on the airport management side, there are no two days are the same. Um, I see. You know, you're meeting with different people, uh, you're working on different projects. Um, and, and just even in working on the commercial side, if you just are there and you're just able to just people watch, um, you learn some fascinating things about the people that are using your airport and in and, and dealing with the airlines. And, you know, you can take that even a step further with the general aviation community. I mean, you can actually become a part of that at any time. I mean, there's moments where you know, if there's a demo flight and they want you to hop on board, I mean, you absolutely <laughs> can get that flying bug taken care of and, <laughs> and, 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 and fly the airplane around and then you can kind of come back and, 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 and help with some design characteristic or aspect on the airport that you notice while you're flying and using it as a pilot. So I, I just, I just really liked how dynamic airport management was and Definitely with that program that I was involved in, uh, with that youth panel reviewing the plans and development of Denver International Airport and kind of figuring out how that airport came to be, I, I definitely wanted to be a part of that. I see. So then in that case, if there were some of our viewers who were interested in doing or taking part in similar programs, do you know of that program, for instance, is still ongoing, or if there are others, perhaps even maybe in the Orlando area or, or any place else um, around the world for that matter that you may know of personally that are still ongoing, or maybe it depends well, on your, your, your university where you went to school at uh, SIU. Right, right. So um, I don't know if the program that I was involved in in high school is, is still up and running. However, you know, I'd, I'd urge students to you know, reach out to people that you know or that you're able to find that work in the industry and just start asking questions. Like for instance, my internship at Denver International Airport actually came from just making a phone call and asking whether or not Denver International Airport had an internship. And at the time they didn't. And so the reply was, um, yeah, if, if you want us to have an internship, put together a curriculum and send it back to us and, and, and we'll review it and then we'll see if we can put something like that together. And they did. And wow. so I, I happened to be one of the very first uh, interns at the Denver International Airport. And that wouldn't have come to fruition had I not asked the question. And so uh, for a lot of people that are aspiring to be pilots that are aspiring to be air traffic controllers that are aspiring to be airport managers uh, there's nothing wrong and I receive phone calls and emails and messages via LinkedIn or Facebook about how do I go about being an airport manager and a lot of people in this profession will be more than happy to share their background and their advice on how you can get into this chair okay that that that, that sounds Fantastic. And right. we'll be sure to uh, make sure to, to provide your information if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. To our viewers as well. Um, so they'll have uh, the ability to, I, I suppose they'll be able to look you up to call you, <laughs> but uh, yeah. also uh, email you or, you know, or any other available uh, methods to contact you and, and ask those types of questions. So you might get a few uh, internship requests. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. If we're able, if we if we have an internship available, I'll definitely more than happy happily share that information. Okay, fantastic. So my next question was getting into uh, some of the, the the pros and cons uh, that from your perspective of being right. an airport manager. What a, what does a good day look like? And conversely, what is a what is a bad day or not as great of a day kind of kind of look like? Well, as I mentioned before, you know, no two days are the same. So that's usually a good thing. It's really hard to get bored uh, <laughs> being an airport manager. Um, most days are great. Um, I attend a lot of meetings uh, with a lot of different stakeholders. Um, like I mentioned before, I meet regularly with the aviation authorities, chief executive officer, also the mayors of Orlando and and Orange County and different leadership teams with the various FBOs. Um, 
and and so um all of that's great and and those people give you a lot of insight on on things that they see with the airport give you a, a lot of ideas on how you can improve it um and it gives you an opportunity to be the representative of the airport through the community um, sure. you know a, a lot of the uh, city and county commissioners you know they're very proud of different things that we do with the airport and in a sense you kind of get to be that poster child representing mm -hmm. the airport and and being that welcome mat as it relates to general aviation for downtown orlando so um on uh, on a regular basis just being a part of that or just sitting in uh, my office chair and looking out the window and seeing one of those global 7500s <laughs> or a gulf stream 650 uh takeoff i mean it, it never gets old that that's always something that um is uh one of those things where you are taking something that used to be a hobby watching airplanes and oh, you're sure. actually rolling that into a career and so um that that really makes this job a lot of fun in my opinion uh some of the things that are challenging you know of course uh, loving what i do of course there are some challenges that come with it you, you have to be very aware of politics uh airports uh they uh, not that a lot of airports make a lot of money but there's a lot of money involved as it relates to certain projects or certain contracts and so with that there's a huge magnifying glass on the different things that we do on a day in day out basis and you have to be steadfast to your principles and what you think is best for the success of your airport and with that at times it, it makes some people unhappy um, some people may want to do something that is not in compliance with your airport rules and regulations or for general aviation airports your minimum standards and 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 with that um, you have to protect uh, the airport because there's policies and and FAA regulations and different procedures that have been set up uh, to protect the airport in that manner um, you have to as the airport director um, be steadfast and make sure that all those rules and regulations are adhered to and like I mentioned before sometimes people aren't going to be happy with the results sure so, yeah, yeah, I guess you, you can't please everybody all the time. Yeah. That that's one hundred percent correct. Yeah, I remember uh, growing up in church, and the pastor said, "You can please some of the people all of the time. You can please all of the people some of the time, but you'll never please all of the people all of the time." Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it sounds like you you've done a, a great job at doing doing that because, from what I understand, you recently won an award. Uh, can you tell us more about that award that you won? Yeah, I was um, humbled and honored um, to be named the General Aviation Airport Manager of the Year by the FAA Southern Region. Um, huge award. Uh, didn't expect it, but I can definitely say it was a team award. Had it not been for my team and us and our ability to work together, um, we would not have been recognized in that fashion. So I uh, definitely share in um, the happiness of that reward with my staff and my team members and the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority for them just trusting in me uh, to uh, lead the airport in this manner. But um, definitely uh, happy to be uh, the General Aviation Airport Manager of the Year um, last year. Awesome. Well, congratulations from, from, from us here at Adorn Before Flight, too. Thanks, Bernard. Thank you. Absolutely. So in summary, to kind of maybe uh, wrap everything into in a, in a circle, if you will, no pun intended, but <laughs> if I was in middle school or in high school and I was watching this video and I uh, had no idea of what I wanted to pursue or how I wanted to do it, uh, just kind of like a high level, I guess, based off of all everything you've already shared with us, is there any uh, sort of next step type of thing I'm, you might advise to take? Uh, would you advise, you know, looking into a, a high school, uh, a internship, 
what, what would you have anything kind of uh, maybe high level to start with that's maybe sort of high level, just simpler, on a simpler note, so to speak? Well, I would imagine a lot of uh, children or, or up and comers, um, young adults, our youth, a lot of the people that are in your program they already are taking education serious and you have to take education serious if you want to go far especially in leadership and management roles in the airport management career because it's very competitive there's only so many airports uh, in the united states especially those airports that are open to the public so uh, with that education is very important um, as you mentioned before, I also find it very important for you to go out and get an internship. Knock on as many doors as you can as it relates to airports or consulting firms that do services for airports or airlines, whatever you can do to get an internship because internships actually are counted as work experience. And as I said before, it's very competitive in order to kind of narrow that competitive gap, uh, having an internship is very, very advantageous uh, for anyone wanting to break into the industry. So okay. definitely do that. But um, what I mentioned before, you, 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 you want to turn your hobby into a career. So if you love watching airplanes or you love being around airplanes, you love doing different things in aviation as a hobby, there's no better career than being in aviation in some capacity or another because you'll, you'll never get bored and your, your high days will be high and even your low days will be high because you're doing something that you're passionate about. I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. Great advice. We really yeah. appreciate that. Uh, is, is there anything uh, in closing you'd like to, to say? Is there? Well, um, in, in closing, um, definitely, um, you, as I mentioned, with turning your hobbies uh, into a career, just, you know, um, don't let anyone discourage you or knock you off of that ladder towards the goal that you're trying to obtain. Um, of course, naturally, there's going to be people that are going to put barriers in your way. Um, you want to be like those carpenter ants when you put something in their path. You know, they either climb around it or they climb over it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, definitely don't let anyone deter you from your dreams and your aspirations. And once you reach your dreams and your aspirations, please be sure to reach back and help others that may have some challenges and share those challenges that you had with them as a testimonial, just to give them encouragement to be where you are, you know, because we got to have a good solid bench, you got to have excellent bench strength. And um, those people are going to be hopefully taking over for you one day, just like how you're going to be taking over for someone else. So you want to be able to reach that hand back to make sure that we're keeping the aviation industry going with that good positive strong bench absolutely well yep. thanks so much for that uh for that advice uh we appreciate that and uh, we will link all your uh contact information uh, uh orlando executives uh, facebook instagram the whole nine yards we'll put that on the in the links for the video and um and on behalf of careers in aviation brought to you by a dorm before flight Thank you, Cyrus Cowell. Thank you, Bernard, and it's been a pleasure. Great Thanks. to talk to you again. You too, you too.